Fred Chepsey, congratulations on Words and Pictures. Can you just describe for us very quickly what Words and Pictures is about? Quickly is difficult. Uh, actually, a little slogan I came up with that, that it's a battle for hearts and minds. Um, it's two people who for different reasons are unable to do what they thought they wanted to do in life and thought they were good at and uh, they come together and meet in a school as teachers um, they kind of spark one another up and in the process spark up the students that they were blaming for being deadheads when some of the time it was the teachers fault not the students um, and uh, they help one another find out or, or come to terms with the reality of what they can do and what they should do and how to move forward in life. Now the film involves... Does that sound boring? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. The film involves the playful competition between the two teachers. Clive Owen is into words and Juliette Binoche's character is into pictures. Yep. Why has the theme of words versus images... Uh, come to be of interest to you at this particular time? Uh, well, actually, I got sent a script um, by Jerry DePego about, well, it was five years before we got to make it. Um, and, you know, it's pretty rare that you get a script uh, that's dense, that's um, well crafted and, and basically ready to go. Um, so that's, that's always an, uh, an encouraging thing on a subject that was worth exploring, uh, you know, on a, on a fairly serious level. Um, but of course it's, you know, it's as much uh, a thing between the two teachers um, that they're doing to kind of, uh, needle's not exactly the right word, but get at one another a little bit. Uh, but also they realise that, you know, how m much it's energising their students and they take it further forward. Much Will you... Like Fred, were you knowingly tapping into the current issue in the zeitgeist at the moment with all the stuff that's happening online where pictures are becoming the primary means of communication and words have, generally speaking, become a very degraded form of communication? Did you deliberately set out to address that particular issue in culture today? Uh, a variation on that, yes. Uh, you, you could call it Twitter versus Instagram or you know uh, why not um, that's why we put in the um, the haiku um, you know it's like <coughs> really 15 words or whatever it is or, or I don't know how many syllables how many letters it is on Twitter but it's 120 or something isn't it? 100 and 140 140, yeah. That's, that's, that's including hashtags, Hashtag, right. links, and all the other nonsense that goes you on. Know, to say you ate a yogurt this morning, to say you got up, oh, gee, lucky you, you got up. Me too. You know, uh, whereas a haiku uh, beautifully expresses, uses words in brevity. Um, it's five, seven, five syllables it's supposed to be. And what? Can I tell you what my favourite one was? Please. Um... A frog. Um, licks bugs off the moon. And if you think about that for a while, this is what a haiku is supposed to do. The frog is actually whipping his tongue out and getting flies off the reflection of the moon in the lake. Right? <laughs> so you get another dimension when you think about it. If you were given the choice if the movie God came down from heaven and said, uh -huh. Fred, from now on, you can only make films or you can only write, which medium would you choose? Uh, I'd probably make film. I'd probably... Um, because I, the, the images, for me, would express a lot more.